All right, the recording is officially started. Thank you for Perfect. the reminder. Well, welcome everyone. And I'll kick it back to James. Okay, got a few more folks wanting admission. Yes, you should be able to hear me if you, I mean, I've got folks saying they can't hear me. We'll wait for further chat on that. In, in any case, um, we're going to cover the basics today also of what is the 1% for art program? What's the difference between a request for qualifications, which is the call for artists that's out now, and a request for proposals, which will come later in the process? We'll cover uh, basics on how to apply using callforentry.org, and we'll uh, go through a, a quick tour of that. We'll talk about how art for KCI will be selected, and then we'll cover the uh, time frame also for uh, decisions to be made and time frame for uh, getting the projects underway. So uh, with that brief overview, I will turn it over to Holly. All right, so and I can't see anyone while I'm sharing my screen, so I hope everyone can share my screen. Yeah, we can see. This, perfect. This is the heat map that you should have received also with your registration. So I'll just briefly go over this so you'll, you'll know which areas we're talking about today and then which ones we're talking about later this year and then which ones are closed also. So one thing that we'll be referring back to throughout this presentation is this I shape or H shape of the new terminal. And you'll see this in various different ways and various different renderings. So this is kind of an easy way to tell which location we're talking about. So when I scroll down here, and this is the overview of all of the 1% for art program for the new terminal and parking at KCI. It's all of the budget allocations, all of the dates and the different areas that there'll be artwork located. So these first four areas here that say fall and say closed, those were the RFQs that are now in the selection process. So those are closed. And the ones we'll be talking about today are the next four here, which are floor large floor-based ceramics, the connector, which I'll show you where that is, and then two locations within the garage, the stairwells and then the arrivals roadway underpass. So um, those will be the ones we're focusing on today, and we won't get into too much detail about specs, but we'll have the overview and then we'll have Q&A at the end if you have specific questions. Um, one question that we did get a lot was from painters and photographers and muralists and um, more types of either traditionally framed artwork or things that can be uh, on a wall base. So this spring, which it says spring 2021 right here, this is actually April 2021. We just announced that yesterday in the MAC meeting. The two concourses, which I'll show you where those are, concourse A and concourse B, that's when we'll release that RF or a call for artists for those locations. So if you're on the call today and you're a painter, a photographer, textiles, traditionally framed artwork, we won't be mentioning any of that today. That will be in the spring, so you haven't missed anything. But you're more than welcome to stay on the call and hear about ceramics and sculpture and lighting and experiential installations. So I just wanna make that clear too today. So back to the locations we'll talk about today. Large-scale ceramics in this area called the check-in hall, and we'll zoom in and talk about this a little later too. The two ends, we have locations set for ceramics. We'll be talking about the connector, and when we say that, that's this whole area here, which has the two people movers. So travelers going from concourse A to concourse B would pass through this connector area. And in the central area, there's an airfield viewing and a historical display. And keeping in mind, all of this is glass also, so you can see outside. Also, the check-in hall is all glass. And I'll show you more renderings of that as well. And the last two that we'll talk about are stairwells in the parking garage and the arrivals roadway. So the garage is right here. 
sorry if I'm moving too fast, and the terminal is all up here. So as you're driving up, your approach would be through here and you drive in between the two. And this is actually a double stack roadway. So you have your departures on the top and your arrivals underneath. So where the parking or the parking garage stairwells are will be above here. You can see them across the way from the check-in hall. And then the roadway underpass, the underpass talk about, talk about this is underneath. underneath. So that's, so that's kind of the kind overview. Of overview. I don't know if James, you want to get right into kind of the RFQ, RFP in the process from there? Sure, yeah. Um, so the call for artists that is out now is a request for qualifications. Uh, it's uh, live through February 13th. And it's a review of portfolios. Uh, and so we're using the tool uh, call for entry dot org for that, which we'll get into in greater detail uh, a bit later this morning. Um, so the process, it's basically a multi uh, committee process. There's a selection panel that mm -hmm. judges qualifications. And uh, from there, the uh, semifinalists are chosen and then finalists and those finalists are recommended are to the municipal art commission. So Holly is pointing out that um, all of the background information on how selections are made and what the goals of the 1% for art program are, are on this website. It's kcmo.gov slash art. And it'll bring you to this page. There's a, it's three tabs. There's an introduction to public art, there is a tab that explains the role of the Municipal Art Commission, and there's a tab for the 1% for Art Program. And if you go to the tab for the 1% for Art Program and scroll down to the bottom of the page, you will see information there about how to apply for a 1% for Art Project, uh, some information about the, the public art being planned for the new single terminal and parking, uh, there's a document about how Casey most selects public art for 1% for art projects. And for those that ad advance to uh, being on contract, uh, there's some information there for what the city typically requires to do business. Uh, so caseymo.gov slash art is uh, a good place for background information. Um, for your basic information on the public art program at KCI, we will refer you to buildkci.com slash art. And every time we mention something or a piece of information, just remember buildkci.com slash art as your launch pad. All of the things we'll talk about today have links on that website, and we update it fairly often when new things come along. So if you do have a question, we add to this area the frequently asked questions. As questions come about, we add to this. So there's a lot of information here from the last two artist information sessions. You can watch the pre-recorded ones here, the two from October, and we'll add the two from uh, this past Wednesday and today's next week. So they'll be located in that area too. Also, um, as James was pointing out, any information about kcmo.gov slash art, signing up for uh, emails from James's office about other 1% projects for Kansas City is also here. The call for artists specifically, so you don't have to search anywhere for them. It's just the first thing on here. We've made it really easy. You click and here's all of those locations that I pointed out on that heat map, on that I-shaped map with the terminal and the parking. They're all listed out here with the dates and you can click directly to those locations and it takes you to the call for entry page. And also the full specifications packet is here. Um, obviously, you guys made it to the register for sessions right here. So that was the first step. So yeah, if you can't find something, um, definitely buildkci.com slash art is the first place to look. Kind of poke around on there. We have a wealth of information about everything we've been working on for the last two years. There's presentations about what is public art. There's renderings. 
for the terminal right here, there's a gallery, there's images and videos, and you can see all of the updated videos of where they are in the process of building uh, the whole terminal in the parking garage. You can learn about the team, the project as a whole. Um, yeah, this is definitely our main hub. If you have any questions, if you can't find something, definitely feel free to reach out to us though. Okay, are we ready to uh, take a closer look at CAFE, callforentry.org? What? So I'll just use the this first one, the ceramics, as an example. So if I click on this, it takes me directly to the call for artist in CAFE. So if we say the word CAFE, that is call for entry. That's what that means. So... Um, this page has a button you can see it near the top there apply it now um, this is a screen that says that kansas city missouri employees etc are not uh, eligible and then it, you'll click through to this page and we're asking for an image list a letter of interest your resume or cv and then of course your work samples also so backing up a little bit too, before you get to this stage, you'll need to set up your portfolio and your profile on CAFE if you don't already have that done. And this is a free service, so anyone can sign up as an artist. So I'm just logged in as myself here so I can show you this. So in your profile too, something that CAFE has is if you are applying not just as a singular artist, but as a team, they have this option in the profile right here that is this individual or team account so if you have a team with multiple artists and you want multiple images for your portfolio you can click this team and that allows you to add all of those things too so that's really convenient so i just wanted to point that out and you can check your settings of what sort of request for qualifications you want to receive there's all kinds of things that you can tailor to your specific discipline as an artist so as Holly mentioned, it's a, it's a free service for artists. Uh, we do not charge a fee for you to enter. Uh, we pay a fee to uh, CAFE to call for entry in order to provide this service to you. Uh, one of the quickest ways to find everything, if you go happen to go directly to call for entry, is to type KCI in the search bar. Mm -hmm. And all of the current RFQs pop right up. So. Yeah, and then again, also on buildkci.com slash art, either way. So we've made multiple ways that you can search for the Probably current click on, the, click on the more info button. Yep. So that, ju that just takes you to the page that we were already on where you do the application. And so within this RFQ, there's several things, and you can read through this. We've tried to provide you with all the information about each location, um, and the eligibility specifics that uh, the city will look for. So all of that's in here. So this little button here, the view site details, it will download all of the specs for this particular location. We'll get into that right after there. But that's there. Um, talks about the site. You can download the full specs packet, background about the project. And then I'll have James talk about we went through the submission materials, but then the evaluation criteria related to that. Right, so you'll have your profile, you'll upload the information that were requested, along with whichever images you want to use uh, for this particular application. Uh, the selection panels uh, review all of the applicants through call for entry they use this tool to do that and they're being guided by the evaluation criteria that are listed there in the call for artists and those those uh, evaluation criteria are artistic excellence relevant prior experience appropriateness to site and subject durability and diversity equity and inclusion uh, and so regarding the relevant prior experience, um, remember it is you are eligible to uh, apply as a team if you feel like that would make you more competitive. Uh, the one trick with that is that when you upload a CV or resume, 
if you have multiple members of a team, you need to ensure that that is one document because it's my understanding that CAFE will only allow one document uh, to be uploaded. So that uh, the selection process uh, to return to that, the, um, the selection panel goes through all of the applications and uh, comes up with a short list that, uh, of semifinalists. There are usually two to five semifinalists. Most typically there are three semifinalists. Uh, those people are invited to submit an actual proposal to prepare and submit an actual proposal. So uh, prior uh, to that point, you know, we're evaluating portfolios, not actual proposals. We don't look at actual proposals until we have the, the semifinalists. Uh, those semifinalists are paid a design fee, uh, otherwise called an honorarium or stipend. And uh, there's about a two month period where that's in development, where they develop those proposals. Then they come back for, they come back for an interview and it's at that point that the selection panel chooses a finalist and an alternate and the finalist and the alternate are recommended to the municipal art commission which then uh, votes on the finalist and the alternate and yeah i know that's a lot of steps in the process at the bottom of all the rfqs all of those dates are listed so if you scroll down to the bottom of any of those it goes through each one of those steps so you can follow along and see where we are in the process so we've tried to make that pretty clear as well. Uh, let's see. I know we're getting through things pretty fast. Yes. If we're going too fast, um, feel free if someone wants to jump in or raise their hand or put a question in the chat. Yeah, why don't we take a break right now for, and, and ask if there are any questions. Yeah, just about the application process itself. Uh, did I see a hand up? You can ask a question live by unmuting yourself or you can raise your hand also. So I see a, do I see a raised hand for Doug? Winter? Yeah, that's me. Yep. Yeah. So if you don't have any relevant experience to a project that you're proposing of, um, uh, say for the stairwell, are you automatically disqualified or can you still propose your piece? So you, it sounds like you have an idea for a proposal that you want to put forward. Uh, That's correct. Yeah, well, the, the process does not really allow for that. It is possible. I mean, you will run into occasions when a public art program or some other type of, uh, you know, public art will um, ask for an RFP, a request for proposals. The reason we don't ask for an RFP right up front is that um, at the end of that process, you're, you're coming up with a, a finalist. But if you've got 100 people applying, then the other 99 have just uh, worked for free and the by by taking that time to actually design a proposal and so the the industry the public art industry has developed the standard to uh, ask for requests for qualifications first there are occasionally requests for proposals uh, it's something that this program uh, is considering for the future uh, but not not the current uh, not the current calls for artists um. Did I answer your question, Doug? I think so. So if I don't have something that say, um, for instance, for the stairwell, if it's uh, 17 by 90 feet, if I don't have something of that scale in my portfolio, then uh, I would not be qualified to go forward. No, you you certainly you certainly would. You'll be commissioned to to make new art that fits the parameters of what we have. So, so your portfolio is there to aid the selection panelists in 
deciding whether you have the qualifications or not for this particular location. Yeah, but what I'm saying in in my portfolio, if I don't have large scale installations, okay. um, then I would not be qualified. I'm just trying to understand. Uh, sure. Um, I I have many years of uh, of work, but I don't have anything to that scale. Sure. Yeah. I think let me jump in too. Um, yes. a, after looking through um, the applications for our first round as well, um, the more information you can provide to the selection panelists to help them understand your your vision or your art process moving forward is helpful. So if in your portfolio, say you only have um, a certain scale of artwork, they're going to see that and maybe they their initial reaction may be, oh, they've never done anything large scale. One thing that's really important is your letter of interest that you upload. So that will be the time when you introduce yourself to the selection panel about your process, uh, maybe mention that you're working towards larger pieces, and that would be the time that you could really explain that to them. So it wouldn't automatically disqualify you in any way, but you'd want to explain it just a little bit more to the panelists, if that makes sense. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Perfect. I saw another question, I thought via Oh, chat. I see. Oh, OK. Can you provide a list of fabricators? Oh, one thing we did skip over. Let me jump back to uh, the build KCI.com slash art. <clears throat> we have created a Facebook page exactly for that purpose. So artists and fabricators can connect and chat and share information. So let me share my screen and show you where that is as well. There's a related question. Uh, if you're an artist but working with fabricators and other vendors, are you considered a team or a sole applicant? If you want the team to be considered as a team, then you would need to include the the qualifications of those team members at the same time. And so we will see occasions when an artist applies as the lead under their name, but in their letter of interest and in their uh, uh, in their letter of interest and when they upload the, the resume or CV, they are sure to include all of the qualifications of their teammates. And Holly has highlighted the address there on Facebook for uh, information about how to connect with fabricators. I dropped it in the chat as well. So you can and it's right in the chat. There. Yeah, so, so for example, you might go to Facebook and and just post a message, you know, I'm looking for fabricators or other artists to potentially team. Uh, so far, I haven't seen much of that type of situation, uh, but it's that, that's the whole reason we set up the Facebook group. Exactly. And when you click on it, it will say private group, but we'll let everyone in. We've just kept it private in case people are sharing um, their phone numbers or their emails in there with different uh, organizations, just so it's a private group. So that's why. But you're more than welcome to join. Let's see. I think I saw another hand up from Dennis Summers. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, great. Uh, I got two quick questions. One is regarding submitting video um, as my work sample. Can I submit links instead of the actual videos? Because that's probably more convenient for everybody. So I guess uh, that answer would come first before my next. OK, well, I wish that were the case, but CAFE is not set up that way. Um, so, you know, all, all of these tools have pros and cons. Uh, this was the tool that the city of Kansas City chose, and they, they do ask for actual video uploads. And, and I think there are some limitations on size also. Well, and that was going to be my next question. Does anyone know what the, is it the cafe's limitation on size or your limitation on yes, size? It's cafe's limitation. It is, and there's, um, let me see. Oh, my session timed out. All the uh, specs are on cafe that go through that, but also again, back to that letter of interest, um, that if you have an additional link with some video, you can drop it in that letter of interest uh, just to allow the selection panel to know that that's available too. If for some reason you can't get it to upload on cafe or something like that, um, 
that would be an appropriate place to drop that link. But we also do need it uploaded in the appropriate spot if you can. Sure. No, I get sense. that. But I've been through the cafe thing before mm -hmm. and their their limits are limiting. Um, it is. So I, I'll, I, I'll do what I can and then put the full links in the letter. Um, and then the, the you mentioned earlier about, um, you know, the other team members or whatever. So I, I would be submitting um, video for a, a, a video wall. And there's different organizations, different companies that make the video walls that I have not um, determined yet would be my partner. Um, and so do, how, how would I handle that sort of information? Um, again, the more information you can give to the selection panelists. So if you are in process of looking for those companies or those organizations, maybe mention that a little bit when you're talking about the route that you want to go um, and maybe put an example of one of those companies just to, again, give a little bit more information and some background on what you want to do. Um, sure, yeah, we're, we're more than more than happy to, to do that. It doesn't have to be set at this very moment of exactly right. who you want to go with. So that's okay. That doesn't disqualify anything. Right. And and so I, they wouldn't be my team members. That's what I was getting at. I would just be I would be submitting as myself because I'm just hiring another company, and I would just make that clear that these are you know examples of the kinds of companies that do this sort of installation. Yeah, that's appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And I just sent in the chat the link for the specifications for uploading media to CAFE. Excellent. So if you chat or if you are not familiar with chat, it's the um, the icon near the top of the screen, at least on my system that has like a little speaking bubble. And there was another question on chat. If we are a team of diverse artists, fabricators, do you have a recommendation for how to coherently present our work in the cafe portfolio? Should we provide images and links in our group CV? Yes, those are always welcome, as well as Holly has emphasized the letter of interest can include a lot of that information. Um, due to the number of media that cafe limits, uh, if it's a team of more than one artist, then presumably one would want to include images from from all of the artists that are, you know, the primary members. That that would be the expectation, I think, of of a typical selection panel member. Um, are we ready to move on to dive in? diving into a little bit of detail about the each of the locations. Let's 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 talk about the specifics here. All right. So again, looking at the overview here just to kind of get a feel for where we're at. So what I'm going to be going through next is the full specifications packet. And that was on and in the RFQ where it says download full specs documentation or document. That's what this is. So it does have the locations of the current areas that are closed, but that helps uh, see an overview of the entire project. So we think that's important to include that. So I'll go through those pages pretty quickly, but it'll help give us a sense of where we're located in the terminal and the parking garage as well. So this first page here, this is a picture of the, if we say check-in hall, great hall, or head house, or terminal entry, this is that's all the same, same location. And when we showed the drive up in between, driving through, parking garage will be located over here, terminal over here, that's what we're looking at. I'll reference this front corner a couple of times in our presentation, just so you see uh, where we're at in like orienting yourself will actually be on the inside of this in one of the next views. Um, there's a project description about the project as well. You can read that at your leisure. 
here's another view of that I shape or H shape with all of the locations listed. So you can see in uh, correlation to themselves where all the art would be located as an overview. Here's the view of here was that front corner that I just referenced. Now we're on the inside of the check-in hall. So you can get a sense of how vast this space actually is and how much light actually comes in. Uh, one thing that's helpful in this packet up in the upper right corner, there's that shape again. The area that they're talking about is always highlighted in red. So you'll know where we're at. So yeah, this is the check-in hall. This was the prior RFQ. I just wanna show some photos or some renderings while we're going through this real fast. Here's a aerial view from the top. You can see really a, how large this space is as well. And again, it's this area in red up here that we're talking about. The space we'll be talking about with ceramics will actually be on this end here and this end here to give you a sense of where those would be located within this space. Um, as you're coming through, just to give you a, a, an overview, security is here. So you would check in here as you come into the airport, give them your bag, go through security, and as you're going through here, you run into retail node A and then concourse A is how this works. This was a side view. And I know I'm going fast through these, but these aren't the locations that we're talking about today. Okay, back to the check-in hall ceramics. So in this spec packet, um, all the specifics, again, we won't get into these too much today, only because we really want to stress that this is a request for qualifications at this time, not proposals. So a lot of these things, like the specific um, pounds per square foot and the height and all of those things wouldn't really come into play until that proposal's time. But if you do have a question about um, something specific about your own artwork, if it would be appropriate or how you could um, make it work within these specs, you can sure ask those things. And I can't see the chat while I'm sharing screen too. So um, if someone does have a question, um, you can just yell it out or James can read it. So like I pointed out before, these two ends in the check-in hall would be the two locations for the ceramics. And this end right here, as you can see, all of this is glass. Part of what our expectations are for these ceramics is um, a pedestal or plinth that they would be sitting on and they would be large. We emphasize large scale. You would be able to see them from the outside as you drove up to the terminal and as well as the inside. And lighting also, let me just not forget that, um, lighting is part of what the artist will have to think about their overall design and the overall layout of their work as well considering um, you'll be able to see this in the nighttime, the daytime, um, the way that it's lit could change throughout the day as the sun moves across here. So that would be something that would we would get into a little further with that short list. Um, they'll have a chance to meet with the architects and talk more about the design, talk more about lighting. Um, all those things will be available for those shortlisted artists. Here's some more specs. Here's looking at, again, there's that front corner I was mentioning. We're looking at the side view here. So you can see how much you could see that artwork through the front window. Here's where cars would be driving up. So yeah, it's something that, you know, as you're pulling up there, you look right in and you can see it. This is a cutaway. That whole middle section is cut out just so you can see the two ends here as well. Um, do we have any ceramics questions before we go on to connector? I know I went through that pretty fast. No? Okay, I'll move on. Let's see. The next location uh, is the connector. So again, up here is where we are. And it's, if you've been to other airports, it's where uh, people movers you typically are. So we're looking at this area here, the ceiling area. And this is quite a long 
corridor connecting uh, Concourse A and Concourse B. So our vision is sort of an experiential installation, which could include lighting, audio, uh, various things, but it would be mounted to the ceiling, not necessarily hanging down. So it wouldn't really be um, a hanging sculpture. We're not considering that. But if you've been to um, Indianapolis Airport, they have lighting on the ceiling. Atlanta has a really great uh, sound lighting glass piece in their connector. Uh, Chicago has a great one um, with music. So those are just some examples. And uh, just to get a feel for some more examples too, I suggest you know just poking around online too, looking at um, art at other airports and getting a feel for um, what other people have done and then how that works with your artwork as well and your ideas. Um, again, all the specs are here, all the pounds per square foot and all of those things, talking about electrical. And again, once we're in that proposals phase, there'll be more talk about um, where exactly the electrical plug-in is um, and all the specifics of actually install it, installing that. Here's an overview, just the, the top view. So you can see yeah, how long this corridor actually is. And then the area in the middle that we would want to avoid since it already has um, items set to be in place for a historical display would be this middle area. So this is airside viewing. You can look out here and actually see the runways and see um, the jetways as well. So all of this is glass. So keeping in mind too, when you're thinking about your work, um, daytime, nighttime, this will be seen at different times of day and different lighting. So that's always something to keep in mind. Um, Holly, there's a question on chat about what is the rough height of the connector? I saw that, let's see. Um, yeah, I don't have all the specs memorized, apologies. Um, let's see. Might be on this page. Because it's 97 wide. That bottom one might oh. have. Possible. It's 630 feet long. Oh, here we go. 12 feet right here. 12 feet, 6 inches right here. You can see that. Uh, question. Can you create something in the something sculptural in the connector that is more flush with the ceiling rather than hanging. That would be, that, that's the level of detail that would be worked out between the semifinalist artists and the project team. Um, I, I will say that there's a general statement being made throughout the specifications that artists will need to uh, uh, account or make arrangements for working around sprinkler heads, um, you know, fire suppression uh, pipes on, in the ceiling, all kinds of things that are part of the building structure. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that is actually on par with what we're looking for, something more flush to the ceiling, not hanging down a lot. So I, I think that is sort of in the overall vision, but again, like James says, in the semifinalist round will be when they, we would get into that. There's also a question about architects using UV proof glass in the hallway. Uh, it is my understanding that yes, it is uh, ultraviolet resistant. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we were just finishing up with the connector, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah. If there's nothing else with the connector, I can move, jump over to the parking garage. So yeah, moving on to parking garage. So this is the first art areas in the garage. We've been focusing so much on the terminal and the last RFQs that were actually across the street here. So this view here is if I was standing at the terminal with my back to that glass wall and looking across the street, this is what I see. So this is an example of one of those stairwells and actually there's two. So one would be here and then there's the huge parking garage and the other ones on the other side. So they coincide with where the pedestrian crosswalks are 
they're also glass fronted. So you can see through them when you're standing across the street and also anyone driving past, you can see right in there. So um, our vision for these is there's a couple of different locations. So these are a couple of different options within this location. Let me go to the next one if it'll help. The, these are a lot of specs here on this, but seeing this rendering here, there's the option to have a piece and it can be connected to the top and the bottom that actually goes in between the stair all the way down, all seven stories. So it is kind of a narrow, thin piece here that would be in between there, if that makes sense. And there would be then two of them. And part of this is you could either do uh, coinciding pieces that are the same, that could be identical, or they could be two completely separate pieces. That would be up to the artist in the proposal phase. Another location in here is actually um, against the window on the inside. So there's a, a 10 inch gap or lip, if that makes sense, from the front glass on the inside. And there could be artwork actually there as well. So that's an option. Um, another thing is if things wrapped around these flat walls right here, let me go back to this right here, each one of the platforms or each one of the levels has a flat wall. This right here is the elevator shaft. So there could potentially be some artwork overlap here, but nothing can drill through that as that's an elevator shaft. So it can't be something really attached to that wall. It would just have to be um, an addition that's enhancing some of the other artwork that's installed um, in the main area. Um, and also talking about this, it can be sculptural, can be lighting, uh, keeping in mind on the stairwell, it'll be touched. So this is kind of an area that's, um, it would be very close to the public. So something that's very durable, which we pointed out earlier, one of the criteria for choosing artwork for locations is durability. So that's something to keep in mind too, depending on your discipline and what materials you use. Um, here's another view of this. These are renderings. Everything's just in white with the CAD drawing. So you don't see the, the final finishes on this, but you could see walking up the stairwell in this space right here is where the piece would be installed. So you could see how close a passenger would be next to it. And then it can run the full length all the way from the top to the bottom. And that's right here. And this Kansas City here is just a rendering of lighting that could go in so you can see the scale. So yeah, there's that one. Any questions specifically about those locations? Yeah, Doug has a hand raised. Yeah. The um, the lighting that says Kansas City, uh, do you have a color palette for that? It'll be white or what kind of colors are going to be used in that uh, design? That's just a placeholder. That may not be there at all. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that is uh, to be determined based on what kind of art uh, the uh, art selection process comes up with. So it's, there, there is a there's a good possibility that it won't be there at all. Yeah, it says this sign is not currently in the project, but may be incorporated during construction. So this is just a TBD placeholder. Um, also, to point out, it was brought up in the last session. Uh, since this is a parking garage, each level does have a color coding to it and signage and all those things that go with it. During the proposal time, uh, the semifinalists will be privy to the, all that information should they want to match any of those color schemes or move in that direction. They'll be able to have that information as well. <clears throat> and what's the distance between the stairwells for the hanging piece? Um, which distance? Let me go back to, uh, oops. The width, I think, is here. Yeah. The... It's pretty thin. Um, yeah. Quite narrow. I know. I'm just, I don't know why like 11 inches is popping in my mind, but I can't promise that that's true. Sorry, I'm like, my face is near the screen to try and see this a little closer. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. Because it's 17 
feet six inches wide, but then that mm, apologies, we don't have this again. This is the specifics that the architects will go into with the semifinalists. I'm looking now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why 11 inches is in my mind, but I, I don't think it's any bigger than a foot there. But I don't want to misspeak. Yeah, I'm I'm not able to zoom in enough on the drawing to to answer that question, unfortunately. It's okay. And Dennis, it was Dennis that asked. Let, let me just make a note, and I can shoot a message, and I'll add this also to our FAQs after this, yeah, was, so you'll have your answer. Doug. Doug, Doug gotcha. Winter, yeah. Perfect. I got you down. So all of these questions that get asked in these sessions, we'll do a. Um, cohesive FAQ after the fact and send it out to everyone that registered as well. So we'll get your question answered. Is there anybody that has, is there anybody that has their hand up that hasn't had a question answered? I've got a hand up for, for Dennis Summers. I don't know if that's. Yeah, okay. I, I, I do. I am um, going back to the concrete wall. Um, you, you mentioned because of the elevators, so we, we can't even put like bolts into the concrete wall. You know, that's a specific question for the engineers and the architects. We were told like bolting something through that or attaching artwork is not the intent of that space. Okay. But there there may be something that we could do though. Okay. And then um, as regard the windows, um, again, as I mentioned, you know, I'm, I'm considering video walls. So generally on one side of video wall is the imagery, you know, the lighting, you know, the LEDs and things. And then the other side is it just kind of black plasticky looking stuff. And so um, would, I don't even know, frankly, I don't, not sure it would even look good, but if it were considered um, for the glass windows, would we want the artwork to face outward to the public seeing seeing that from the outside or would we want it facing inward um, and would it be a problem because it would actually be blocking light from getting into the stairwell because the video panels themselves um, are opaque except for where the light comes you know is emitted um, yeah I think uh, those are a lot of good questions again more for the RFP phase but um, considerations on um, they the architects went to a lot of trouble to um, design this with light with light and openness in mind. So I think blocking that is probably not something that uh, everybody would be happy about. Um, so there may be a solution if something were double sided or it were every other panel or something like that. So I think solutions can be reached, um, but just definitely keep those things in mind of we're not, uh, I guess, covering up the architecture. We wanna enhance it, and then the artwork will also be showcased uh, from all angles, if possible. Okay, sure, all right. I can look into that and see if they make double-sided um, panels. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions about the stairwells before we move on to the next location? Okay. Arrivals roadway. So let me back up where we were with the stairwells here. This is actually the departures roadway. So directly underneath this, there's another roadway, which is the arrivals, which is where we've envisioned a lighting installation. So Across these pedestrian walkways, there's two located here. You'll see all of this is concrete up here. There's concrete pillars. There's a long corridor here. Go to the next thing. You can see how many lanes it goes across. So just to put it in perspective, over here would be the terminal. And you arrive at baggage and you come out the doors. And you can go across two pedestrian crosswalks. So this is a roadway here for the arrivals and pickups. And then you go to a median here, which is actually open all the way up. 
you can see that here. You can see through right here. You can see the double stack road right here. You would walk across. You'll see the bottom level of that stairwell as well. So the artwork actually goes through the road all the way down too. So you can see the height of that from this angle really well. And then here it's actually open. You can look all the way up and there's planter boxes. There's some natural light coming through, but also still that concrete ceiling and the concrete pillars. So this would be the first time people arrive in Kansas City, come out with their bag and welcome. So what in this location, um, as you can see in this rendering, it's you know pretty dark and just plain. We're envisioning a lighting installation. So what type of lighting? It could be multicolored. It can be um, attached to several different locations in here. Again, we'll get into that more in the proposals phase. But it can be two different lighting installations or again, could be sister installations, essentially. So there's quite a lot of space to think about within here. One question that did get asked in the last session, let me go back in the requirements. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, in the description, it says it may be, hang, may be able to hang from or be treatments. And this was the question, paint or other media upon the ceiling structure. So as this is just plain concrete, if there were a component where this were painted or had other design elements that weren't the lighting, that's completely appropriate to include that in your lighting scheme to think about the overall design. So that's why they added that in there. That you may use other materials as well. That's okay. Um, here's another view, just so you can see. So if I were standing at the terminal looking across and I can see that stairwell again and I'm on the underpass. You can see where the artwork could potentially be. Both of these renderings and here's more specs here. And they're a little easier to read in this diagram. One thing that artists will have to keep in mind is since there are roadways, there will be signage, there will be traffic lighting, all those things will have to be discussed with those traffic engineers and getting all that approved as well, just so something isn't um, a flashing light that maybe looks like an emergency light. Um, we wouldn't want to mimic anything that's traffic related, so keep those things in mind as well. Um, yeah, so we've, we've made it through the locations. It's a good point to pause and ask if there are any questions about any of the locations, some of the details. OK, well, the next step. Got it. Next step then is for the uh, the applications are live through February 13th. Uh, upon that deadline, uh, we'll have the selection panels log in to call for entry and begin their judging. They'll have approximately a month to judge. Um, they'll have approximately a month to judge, then um, semifinals will be announced. They will have uh, another two months to design or so, and then there will be the interview in which the um, finalists and uh, the finalist and the alternate will be chosen. So um, a couple of questions did come up. Uh, let me. Let's see. Yeah, I have what size do you think of as large scale ceramics? And well, yeah, that, that gets brought up too. Um, and I know it got discussed in the last meeting, depending on what type of uh, building uh, I guess process you use with your ceramics, there are square or pound per square foot limitations. So if you do work that's, you know, thinner or not built as thick, it could be taller, but it's more weight limitations versus scale. I mean, that, that glass wall is quite tall. So I think they had just in, in the space in there kind of a 30 foot height, 30 or 35 foot height, but you wouldn't necessarily have to go that tall. They could be wider than tall. That's completely up to the artist's vision. 
And as long as we're talking about ceramics, there's another question about uh, are the ceramics limited to being placed on a base or plinth? That's currently how it's imagined. Uh, in developing these specs, the architectural team uh, did not indicate anything about hanging from the ceiling. So it is meant to be floor based. Uh, but again, these are questions that are really more at the proposal level. Uh, the, it's the, the level of detail that, um, you know, we we encourage any of those, any artists who have doubts about whether to apply or not, that, that you might as well apply because it doesn't cost anything. It, it does take time, but there's no fee associated with applying. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was another question about, is there a branding guide for the airport? There is a materials palette. There's... The branding guide can be Hollywood that be on buildkci.com somewhere. Um, a lot of that, yeah, a lot of that hasn't been revealed yet. So they're uh -huh. still building the airport. So they're not showing everyone what the signage looks like just yet. Uh, they do have teams working on that of sort of which fonts they're using, all those things. But yeah, as we get into the uh, the process with the finalists, all of those things will be available to make sure everything's cohesive with the art and the design theme. So absolutely. OK, we've got a uh, an answer from someone on the call here who's very involved with the, the, the architectural project and the space in the stairwell for the uh, the work of art is, is limited to five and a half inches. Oh, OK, so it's a lot smaller than I thought. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for answering that. Um, well, I want to make sure we covered everything. I don't think I answered this question at the very beginning. A lot of people ask, can I apply to multiple locations? Absolutely. Yes, please. Um, I don't know. Everybody's kind of quiet today. All right, here's a question. I'm a woodworking artist. Uh, I was wondering what area would... Uh, uh, technical difficulties. Give me a moment. Oh, sure. There we oh. go. I was wondering what area would be ideal for large scale wood wall hanging. Oh, OK, good question. Um, works that hang from the wall are are best imagined for concourse A and concourse B, and we haven't done that call for artists yet. And that will be going out. Holly, April 2021. April. So yeah, I have all of uh, if you registered for this session, I do have your email. So I'll make sure to email you information about the next sessions that are coming out. So yeah, anything that would be wall based or able to be mounted on a wall um, would be applicable for the next round of RFQs or the next call calls for artists. And there's a question about how is your selection committee chosen? Is this public information as their credentials go? Uh, the selection committee was um, was chosen uh, of project stakeholders. So in other words, a member of the aviation department. Uh, people involved in the arts in the community. Uh, people from the Municipal Art Commission. And it was through a uh, process of nominating uh, in which uh, members of the Municipal Art Commission were asked to nominate and members of the architectural uh, project team were asked to nominate. And I've just dropped in the chat a whole news article that lists the current selection panelists for the first four locations and it lists their names and their credentials. So yes, it's, it's public information. The the group of selection panelists for this particular uh, call for artists has not been uh, decided yet or announced yet. Correct. Dave, I see Dave has a hand up. Dave Schwartz. Looks like you're muted. You'll have to unmute yourself. There we go. How's that? 
Hey. Yeah, perfect. Uh, has any discussion or decisions been been made about uh, any water displays as Kansas City is the city of fountains? Yes, uh, there is actually a fountain that's outside of the one percent for art program that will be on the location. Uh, that that uh, procurement process uh, is outside of our purview. Um, as far as being inside the terminal, no, there will not be any water based fountains inside the terminal. There is a uh, currently in the judging stage. There is a location in which the work of art is meant to be inspired by Kansas City's long history of fountains. And that's the so-called uh, retail node A, and it, as I mentioned, it's currently in the judging for that. Mm -hmm. But that will be a dry uh, art, art piece, right? Yes, as the yeah. baggage handling ma uh, machinery is right below it. It won't have water inside. Um, one thing I didn't mention, just to show a little visual to go with your question you just asked. Let me see if I can find it. There is the green space right outside the baggage claim, and that's where that exterior fountain will be located, like James mentioned. Um, but that is a separate project from the 1% for art. I don't know if I have a good picture of that. We don't. It's yeah. If you're looking out this wall, it's below it. So the baggage claim is below this area. And there's a green space right below here, and they'll they'll actually be found. So it's kind of in this little area right here. I don't know if you can see where my cursor is right there. Yes, yes. Yeah. So they'll they'll will be a fountain with water located right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Here's a, here's a question in chat. In our initial submission, are we allowed to submit images of projects under contract that are in fabrication but not yet installed? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, Yes. Yeah, well, we had that question again too from the other session or the October session. Um, someone asked too, uh, are process photos okay if something is half built or um, part of the artwork itself is the process? Yeah, whatever showcases your artwork best to the selection panel, you're free to showcase those images. Thanks, Dylan. Hi, I didn't know you were on. OK, it looks like uh, we've gotten to a slow point in the process. Um, we have plenty of time for other questions. Um, I'll put my email in here. If you have, if you think of other questions, we would like to compile them all here in the next week. So if you think of something else in the next couple of days, um, shoot James or I an email and we'll get those FAQs added. Um, I put my email in the chat. It's the same email you got your registration form from. So you can just respond back to that if you think of something. So yeah, we're available if you have any additional questions. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining on a Saturday morning. Or It's morning in Kansas City. I don't know where everyone else is, but um, we appreciate it. All right, thanks for your interest. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. Right. Best of luck. Thanks very much.